Welcome back for our tutorial on Activity 2.1, Keep Me in the Loop. Today we're going to go ahead and take a look at how we can actually code our start button to include those for loops and procedures to reduce the amount of redundant code. In the two previous tutorials, we took a look at our activity introduction as well as what our procedure blocks look like and how we can use those procedures and for loops to reduce the redundant code in our program. So today we're going to mainly focus on just using that start button to basically get our bus to travel from the school to the museum. And the route we're going to be taking for this is what I like to call Route 1. And you can see that that's going to be that bottom most route on your screen. So we're going to go ahead and follow that red tracing label to try and get our bus to the museum. Now in our optional extension, we'll go ahead and modify that red tracing label so that it follows directly behind the school bus. For now, we're just going to mainly focus on programming that start button and getting the bus to get from point A to point B. So one of the first things I like to do is to go ahead and take a look at my user interface and how I can basically make it look a little bit more aesthetic as far as that start and reset button go. So a couple of the things that I want to look at is just going ahead and changing some of the properties of each of those buttons. We're not going to do a whole lot, but we do want to make it stand out on our app a little bit better and make it a little bit easier to read. So the first thing I'm going to do with my start button is I'm going to make that bolded. We're going to go ahead and increase the font size to 20. We can go ahead and change our shape from rectangular to more of a rounded shape. And then we can go ahead and take a look at the background color of that button. Since this is going to be my start button, I'm going to go ahead and make that start button green. That will make that stand out just a little bit more. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the reset button and you'll notice that I've already changed the background color to red. We'll go ahead and make that font bold. We're going to change that font size to 20 to match our start button. And then from there we'll go ahead and change the actual shape from rectangular to more rounded. That will keep both of those buttons a little bit more uniform. Now that we have the properties changed, what I'd like to add is a little spacer in between that start and reset button. I can do that by dragging a horizontal arrangement in between those two buttons. Once I bring that horizontal arrangement in, I'm going to want to go ahead and make sure that I change the height of that to fill parent. Once I change the height, I then need to go back to horizontal arrangement 1. And the last thing I want to do here is I'm going to change that align horizontal to a center and that will put both my start and reset button right into the middle of the screen. Now that I have the properties changed, we can go ahead and take a look at what it's going to take to actually code that start button. So going over to our block view, what you'll notice is I've collapsed all of my blocks except for my reset button. There's nothing that we need to modify at this time in any of the starter code that was given to us. The only thing we're going to go ahead and look at is basically our start button and when it is clicked. So again, when that start button is clicked, we want to get that bus to basically travel where that red line is in order to get to the museum. And we're going to do that by using our for loops and three different procedures that were created. And that's your turn left procedure, turn right procedure, as well as the move forward. So finding a blank space on our canvas, we're going to go down to our start button and select what happens when the start button is clicked. Now the first thing that we're going to need our bus to do is move forward. So sitting at our school, we're going to notice that it's going to actually move forward four spaces. If I bring in a procedure that just simply says move forward, all that will happen when that start button is clicked is that that bus will move one block. So testing our app, if we hit start, you're going to notice that that bus moved one block. If I duplicate this, we should be able to now get the bus to move forward two spaces. So as you'll see, that bus moved two spaces. And again, if we go ahead and duplicate that two more times, we can achieve our outcome by getting the bus to move the four spaces that we need. However, our objective of this is to reduce the amount of redundant code that's in the actual program. So in order to do this, we're going to actually remove our move forward blocks. What we're going to use in place of that is a for loop. 
So under our control structures, we can go ahead and find a for each number. Here we have our starting point, which is 1, our ending point, which is 5, and our count by, which is 1. What we want our program to do is basically move forward. Now in this case, our block is telling us that we're going to move forward 5 spaces. We want to go ahead and change that 5 to the number 4. Now what you'll notice is by using a for loop, when the start button is clicked, my bus will move forward those four spaces. From there, we're going to go ahead and look and get our bus to go ahead and turn left. So again, we can go ahead and use another procedure, but this time we're going to call the turn left. We want to make sure that this procedure is not inside the for loop, but outside. We don't need it turning left four times. We want to make sure that it is turning left after that loop is completed. So as you can see now, my bus has not only moved forward four spaces, but it has also turned left. From here, we're going to need our bus to move forward two additional spaces. So by duplicating my for loop, I could simply go ahead and change my two from a four to two. Once we have that programmed, we can go ahead and test it on our app to see where our bus is actually located. Here you will notice that we will need to turn left again. And after we turn left, we're going to need to go down two more blocks. So again, we'll need to move forward two more blocks. And again, here's a good time to reset our app and test. And you'll see that now we have our bus facing down in that bottom corner. So now that my bus is facing down, we will need to turn right, and then we will need to move forward two additional spaces. So again, we'll grab a turn right procedure, and from there we'll go ahead and duplicate my for loop to turn right and move forward two spaces. So resetting my app and starting it again, you can now see that my bus is down in that corner again, and it looks like we're gonna need to turn right and then move forward one block. So in order to do this, we don't need to really create a loop, but rather we're going to go ahead and call our turn right, and then we're going to call a move forward. Now that we've moved forward, you'll notice that now we are also going to need to make an additional turn left, and then we'll need to move forward a couple more spaces. So again, we'll go ahead and duplicate the move forward, We'll add our turn left there, and then we're going to need to go ahead and move forward three additional blocks. So again, we can add our for loop, change our two to a three, and let's go ahead and test and see where we're at. Now that you see where we're located, we'll see that we still need to turn left and move forward two more spaces. So again, I can go ahead and duplicate my procedure. And then we're going to need to go ahead and move forward those two additional spaces. Now, if you do make a mistake and you happen to have the wrong four block, you will notice on your app that your bus will kind of go off the screen. We could simply change that by making sure we go and edit that for loop. And let's retest to make sure where we are at. And now it looks like all we really need to do is to turn right one more time. So we'll call that procedure. And then from there, we're going to need to go ahead and move forward two additional spaces. So again, if we test our app, we should now see that the bus is able to travel from the school to the museum. You can see that our red line is kind of following behind it a little bit, but we do need to make some minor modifications to that, which we're going to take a look at at our next video tutorial. Now, as an extension, what you can do is instead of adding just a start button here, we can actually go ahead and add a route one, a route two, and a route three button where we can get our bus to actually navigate any of the three provided routes. If you'd like to learn a little bit more about changing your tracing label, please follow the next video tutorial.